The AIM-120 AMRAAM stands for Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile. It is an American beyond visual range air-to-air -air missile. To say that the AMRAAM is a fire and forget weapon is both accurate and inaccurate. Depending on range to target, the AMRAAM may come off the rail active, meaning if the bandit is close enough, the AMRAAM may come off the aircraft already using its own radar inside the missile seeker to hit the target, and therefore does not require information from the launch aircraft. At further ranges, the AMRAAM missile is dependent on the launch launch aircraft to guide to the target and becomes active in what is called terminal guidance. Once the missile is close to the bandit, this going active is often referred to as pitbull. Due to this method of guidance, called active radar guidance, the AMRAM's brevity code is FOX3. As of 2008, more than 14,000 AMRAMs had been produced for the United States Air Force, the United States Navy, and 33 international customers. The AMRAM has been used in several engagements, achieving a confirmed 16 air-to-air -air kills in conflicts over Iraq, Bosnia, Kosovo, India, and Syria. In order to understand the AMRAM, we need to first discuss its predecessor, the AIM-7 Sparrow. The AIM-7 Sparrow medium-range missile was designed by Hughes Aircraft in the 1950s as its first operational air-to-air -air missile with beyond visual range capability. With an effective range of about 12 miles or 19 kilometers, it was introduced as a radar beam riding missile and was later improved to a semi-active radar guided missile, which would home in on reflections from a target illuminated by the radar of the launching aircraft. This form of guidance was designated FOX-1. The AIM-7 Sparrow would serve as the definitive primary weapon for the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom fighter interceptor. Although early variants were designed for use against non-maneuvering targets such as bombers, these early variants of the Sparrow displayed poor performance against fighters over North Vietnam. These missiles were then progressively improved until they became highly effective in dogfights. But what later turned into a disadvantage for FOX-1 missiles was that only one target could be illuminated by the launch aircraft at a time. Also, the launching aircraft had to remain pointed in the direction of the target or within the gimbal limit of its radar capability capabilities which could be difficult or dangerous in air-to-air -air combat. The reason it's now viewed as a disadvantage for the FOX-1 to constantly require illumination of the bandit to hit the target is that with later missiles designated FOX-3 like the AMRAAM, the launch aircraft could turn and run and the active radar within the AMRAAM would find the target and hit it by itself which again depended on range. This ability to turn and run greatly improves the survivability of the launch aircraft compared to aircraft that could only carry the FOX-1 or semi-active radar guided missiles. This brings up the question, why not just make an active variant of the Sparrow? In the 1950s, this is exactly what the US Navy and the Canadian Air Force wanted to do. The new missile was to be named the Sparrow II, but was abandoned fully in 1958. The electronics of the time simply could not be miniature enough to make the Sparrow II a viable working weapon. It would take decades and a new generation of digital electronics that would later lead to the development of the AIM-54 Phoenix and later the AMRAAM. Speaking of the AIM-54 Phoenix, it's worth mentioning that it was the stepping stone between the Sparrow and the AMRAAM in terms of technology and weapons development. The Phoenix was the first US quote, fire and forget multiple launch radar guided missile, one which used its own active radar guidance system to guide itself without help from the launch aircraft during terminal guidance. This capability was so advanced for its time that in theory it gave the Tomcat with a 6 Phoenix load the unprecedented capability of tracking and destroying up to 6 targets beyond visual range as far as 100 miles away with a missile capable of active homing in the terminal phase. The Department of Defense conducted an extensive evaluation of air combat tactics and missile technology from 1974 to 1978 at Nellis Air Force Base, using the F-14 Tomcat and the F-15 Eagle equipped with Sparrows and Sidewinder missiles as the Blue Force and the aggressor F-5E aircraft equipped with AIM-9 all-aspect Sidewinders as the Red Force. A principal finding of this extensive evaluation was the necessity to produce illumination for the Sparrow until impact result 
resulted in the Red Forces being able to launch their all aspect Sidewinders before impact of the Sparrow, resulting in mutual kills between Red and Blue aircraft. This highlighted the massive shortcomings of the Sparrow and the problems with the Fox 1 missile and also showed the importance of active radar homing like the AIM-54 Phoenix. A missile that when launched at close distances would allow the launch aircraft to turn and run, therefore would not result in a mutual kill to the Red Team. However, the AIM-54 had its own drawbacks. We won't get too deep into that in this video, but the principal issues were weight, sheer size of the missile, and also its cost. Therefore, it was determined that what was needed was a Phoenix-type multiple launch and terminal active capability in a Sparrow-size airframe. The AMRAM was developed as a result of an agreement among the United States and several other NATO nations to develop air-to-air -air missiles and to share production technology. Technology. Under the agreement, the US was to develop the next generation medium range missile, AMRAM, and Europe was to develop the next generation short range missile. ASRAM. Although Europe initially adopted the AMRAM, an effort to develop the Meteor missile, a competitor to the AMRAM, was begun in the United Kingdom. When it comes to the performance of the AMRAM, such as countermeasure resistance or effective range, that information remains classified. But we can gain some insight into the missile's capabilities when we look at its use in the past. For example, on the 3rd of March 2020, a Syrian Air Force L-39 was shot down by Turkish Air Force F-16s with an AIM-120 C. 7 at a distance of about 45 kilometers or 28 miles. As of 2020, this has been the longest AIM-120 confirmed kill. On the 27th of February 2019, India stated that the Pakistan Air Force used AMRAMs during Operation Swift Retort. The only confirmed loss of the engagement was an Indian Air Force MiG-21 Bison, while Pakistan said it also shot down a Sukhoi-30 MKI Flanker H. This is denied by Indian officials claiming that an Indian Air Force Sukhoi-30 MKI had dodged and jammed three to four AMRAMs during the course of the interception and had not been shot down. However, the facts from this engagement remain highly controversial and little can be confirmed by either side. In conclusion, the AIM-120 Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile has proved its combat capabilities during missions in Iraq, Bosnia, Kosovo, and Syria. With multi-shot capability, high immunity to countermeasures, and a low-smoke solid-fuel rocket motor, it is trusted by over 36 nations worldwide and is carried by the feared F-22 Raptor and other state-of-the-art fighters like the Eurofighter Typhoon, F-15, F-16, F-A-18, F-35, Gripen, and many more. It can hardly be argued that the AMRAAM is one of the world's best air-to-air -air missiles.